Good morning. Good morning. A lovely Michigan day outside with no rain, for which I'm sure we are all grateful having gone through Friday. Um, just a couple announcements. The consistory has decided to maintain mask wearing for the time being, primarily for those who have health concerns to help protect them. Um, July 18th, we will be having a in-person get-together. There will be a church picnic on the 18th after worship. A potluck, a potluck church picnic, yes. Yeah, so start going through your old ver uh, versions of tidings and uh, uh, find a recipe in there and the share a recipe you want to bring in. Um, Charlie will be going and getting the chicken. So is there a sign-up sheet yet or no? No, okay. I should probably make one of those. So we should all make, we'll all just bring potato salad. Yeah, please <laughs> At least one pie. Oh, yeah. Or Jimmy and I will make you go out and buy it. Well, Jimmy and, Jimmy and uh, <coughs> Charlie will be cranky, and we don't want them cranky. And consistory will be on July 11th after service. Any other announcements I may have overlooked, missed, forgotten? No. Okay. In that case, let us begin worship with our opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Thank you. You may be seated. Let us join together in our responsive call to worship. We wait for the Lord, our souls wait for the Lord. And find hope in God's word. Our souls wait for the Lord. More than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. <clears throat> Let us seek hope in our God. Whose power is enduring love. Whose redemption brings healing and grace. We wait for the Lord and find our hope in God's presence. Let us pray together. Holy, Holy One, one in, in peace or in pain, pain we, we call, call to you and you answer. answer. Hear our, our voices, O God, God, and the cries of our hearts. Come, Come and bring, bring us your presence. Come, Come and bring, bring us your, your peace. peace. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 and 17 through 27. There was a certain man of Ramathaim, a, a Zuphite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeraham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. Then Eli said, Go in peace, the God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. 
And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The man Elkanah and all his household went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vows. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him, that he may appear in the presence of the Lord and remain there forever. I will offer him as a Nazarite for all time. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him, only... May the Lord establish his work. So the woman remained and nursed her son, and she weaned him. When she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine. She brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who is standing here in your presence praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me the petition that I made to him. Our second reading is Psalm number 130. Out of the depths I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 21 through 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? <clears throat> and his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked around, all around to see who had done it, but the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him <clears throat> and went into where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, come. 
which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. I won't be long this morning. I want to confess to you that I have had a grueling week. Lots of good has happened. I had between 20 and 45 volunteers serving with me every day this week. They served at 24 families' homes over the week and completed 39 projects. Garages painted looking like new. New front steps built so that people could go in and out of their house safely without walking at an angle. New locks installed, lots of backyards and fence lines cleared and cleaned up, doors painted, <clears throat> caulking done, a new back porch built, a new back door installed, fences repaired, gates installed, a new playscape built so that the grandkids would have something to play on when they came to grandma and grandpa's house. But mostly, lots of love shared, stories told, relationships formed. And in fact, as I say to my volunteers every day, because of what they did, the whole wide world is different and changed. Then yesterday, I had the privilege of unloading 5,000 pounds of dog food, cat food, <laughs> and dog and cat related accessories into the Rippling Hope Center for Mission and Service that will be distributed to animal rescue organizations and individuals to feed hungry dogs and cats. And then there was the rain, right? That glorious rain we had. Our grass and gardens ought to be growing like crazy. I share this with you just to give you a sense of what else your pastor does when not focused on the life and ministry of St. Paul's. UCC DOC Church. As I've gone through this week, I've been thinking about this morning's message. It's about faith and hope and what we expect when we turn to God. I try and begin each day, especially when I have volunteers, by asking God to give me the strength, the courage, and the wisdom to face the day, to do the right things, to say the right things that will encourage and motivate volunteers to help those we serve feel hope. I often find myself saying little prayers throughout the day asking God for help. Like on Friday morning, when we were trying to install a new back door on a woman's house in the pouring rain. Someone had come and tried to pry open her back door and it was not secured. It was a mess and it was an old door in an old frame, in an old house. I had told her that we would do our best to get a new secure door installed. We took the old door out, came out very easily. And we tried to put the new one in. No, it didn't fit, even though it was the right measurements. But it's a new door. New doors are built a little bit differently than the old doors were. So, we began to make adjustments to the frame. Shaving a little bit here, trimming a little bit there, still no luck. One thing was certain, it was going to continue to rain. <laughs> we were stuck. We were frustrated and soaking wet. I began thinking that at some point, the volunteers who were from Petoskey, who were hoping to be leaving at noon to make the drive home ahead of the rush of people going north, towards their part of the world, they were going to leave. And I was going to be there with my friend, the door, <laughs> for however long it was going to take me. I was not particularly happy. Because you see, I was standing outside under a little piece of overhang with gutters, but guess what, the gutters needed to be replaced too. So all that water coming off the roof was coming right down my back. <clears throat> I offered suggestions to the volunteers, which they tried and tried and tried again. It still just didn't work properly. At some point late in the morning, I said, let's take a break for a minute and take a breath. 
At that very moment, one of the teenage boys who was working with us said, Carl, let's just have faith that we can make it work. Let's just have some faith, and I think we'll get it done. So we went back to tweaking, measuring, fretting, moving hinges and strike plates, ever so slight adjustments. And guess what? At almost straight up noon, we tested the door. It opened. It closed. The deadbolt worked. The lock hit the strike plate just right. The homeowner came down and was ever so happy. We said a little prayer of thanksgiving at that moment. We packed up our tools. The volunteers were able to head for home. And I was able to go try to find some dry clothes and get on with my day. Was it our faith that got that door to work, I wonder? I'd like to think it was our faith and at least a little bit of skill and expertise from us that made it happen. When tough situations occur in your life and you turn to God and ask for help, what do you expect? And why do you expect that from God? Jesus addresses these questions in this morning's gospel lesson from Mark that we just heard. A large crowd was following Jesus into town because one of the leaders of the synagogue had come and pled with Jesus to come with him into the city so that he could heal his little girl who was dying. So Jesus and his disciples went. While they were on their way, a woman who was in great pain and who had been suffering for 12 years saw Jesus, snuck up behind him, touched his robe, and immediately, it says, immediately was made well. Jesus, recognizing that something had happened, turned, encountered the woman, and said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. They continued on to the leader of the synagogue's house, but were interrupted by some people who came and said his daughter had died. Some in the crowd said, it's too late. Don't bother Jesus with this. Let him go on his way. But Jesus said to the many, do not fear, only believe. They went on to the house and the little girl was healed. Do not fear, only believe. Have faith and all will be well. Sounds pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So why is it so hard for us sometimes? Is it because of our lack of faith? Or is it about what we expect when we call out to God? I wonder. For the first 12 years of my life, I was blessed to live near my maternal grandmother my Nina. I was the firstborn grandchild, and as I still like to remind my sisters, I was Nana's favorite. <laughs> From the time I was five years old, two or three Saturdays each month, I got to go and spend the night at my Nana's house. And then we would go to church on Sunday morning. The first thing I always did when I got to Nana's house was go and see what kind of cookies were in the cookie jar. And almost every single time, there was something different in there. I still have that cookie jar. I loved my Nana. We played games, we watched TV, we read books, and we just hung out together. My Nana taught kindergarten Sunday school for over 35 years at the church that I grew up in. For the last 20 years of her life, she also battled cancer, various forms of cancer. She had many surgeries and different kinds of treatment. Yet she continued to work at her job and teach Sunday school as she was able. It was only after her death that my mother told me how much Nana had suffered physically during those years, and yet I could never tell. No one but my mom knew that. Such was my Nana. For a long time, I wondered about this. Sometime while in seminary, still pondering the question, I remembered a conversation Nana and I had when I was a young boy in my mid-elementary school years on one of those Saturday night sleepovers. 
Christmas was drawing close, and she asked me what I wanted for Christmas. And I said that I had made a list, and that every night, like my Nana had taught me, every night when I got down on my knees next to my bed and said my prayers, every night I prayed to God that I would get everything I had put on my list, even the things that I would think of and add to the list. She asked me if I thought that praying to God, if praying to God would get me the things on my list. And I told her, well, yes, Nana, isn't that why we pray? She said, Carl, what do you expect when you say your prayers to God? I said, we hope, or I hope, that I'll get all the things I ask for in my prayers. A good kid's answer, right? A kid who'd grown up in Sunday school hearing that we just pray to God and everything is going to work out. <clears throat> she said, honey, we pray to God because we believe in God. Because we know that God knows what we need. And because God is always right by us and with us. Because we know that God is always listening to us and responding as God knows best. It's why we talk with God. But it doesn't always mean that we get what we want just because we pray to God. In 1973, I was a freshman in college at Texas Christian University when my parents called to tell me that Nana was back in the hospital yet again, that her cancer was back and that things didn't look good. She was battling, but the doctor said there was nothing more they could do, no more surgeries, no more treatments because the cancer had come back this time with a vengeance. I said immediately that I want to come home. I don't care about the rest of this school year. I want to come home and be with my Nana. And they said, no, Nana wants you to stay at school and just keep saying your prayers. I shared what was going on with my next door neighbor in the dorm who was a senior. So I thought of him to be a very wise person. He was a person from a very evangelical church background. He said that I should just pray, and that if, I, that if I prayed the right prayers, my Nana would be healed. So I tried that, every day praying that Nana would get better one more time. Well, you know what happened. A couple of weeks later, my phone rang again. My parents called to tell me that Nana had passed that day and they were making arrangements for me to fly to Kansas City for the funeral. I was devastated and immediately sought out my next door neighbor and told him what had happened and how upset I was. I was stunned by his response. He said, well, you must not have been praying hard enough or praying the right prayers. I wanted to hit him at that moment I couldn't believe what I had just heard, but it is a perspective that too many people have. I hadn't been praying hard enough or saying the right prayers and so Nana had died? I was left to struggle with this question for quite some time. I do remember that at her funeral, our pastor said Dorothy, my Nana, was one of the most spiritual people he'd ever known and that he knew that she prayed to God every day for healing from her cancer. He also acknowledged that many, many others had also been praying for her healing, which was a testimony to the full sanctuary at her funeral. He also said that we pray to God because we have faith that God hears our prayers and responds to them. Maybe not always as we'd like or as we'd expect, though. But he reminded us that God listens to us always, and so now, though Dorothy is no longer with us, though she lost her physical battle with cancer, though she hasn't healed of her disease, we can live like she lived, with the sure knowledge that God answers our prayers by giving us comfort and peace and promising to continue walking with us. These very words I have incorporated into virtually every single funeral I have ever been part of. What do we expect when we turn to God in prayer? 
Do we expect magical things to happen? Do we expect all the things on our Christmas list to be under the tree on Christmas morning? Do we expect answers to everything we ask? Or do we expect that God will hear and respond to us by being with us? Bad things, challenging things, trying things are sure to happen in our lives, even when we try and live lives of faith, even when we pray to God. Living as God's faithful people does not assure us of lives free of hardship and pain. For expressions of grief and expressions of hope are both, you see, acts of faith. For when we lift up our grief and when we lift up our expressions of hope, we do it because we would not bother calling out to God if we didn't hope and if we didn't believe that God would hear and respond to us. So when times are good, pray to God. Give thanks and praise for God's blessings. When times are tough, pray to God. Give thanks and praise that God promises to listen, to respond, and to continually walk with us, giving us comfort and peace. Do not fear, Jesus said, only believe. God is good. God is with us. Stay safe, strong, and of good courage in the living and the facing of these days. Go with God. Amen. Let us pray together our prayer of dedication. Thank you, God, for your many blessings to us. Accept now our tithes and offerings and use us and our gifts for your kingdom. Amen. You may be seated. Do I have any other prayer requests? Or are there any that I don't have in my hand? Okay. Um... Prayers for Marcia and her son. I know a couple weeks ago her son was in the hospital, so prayers for his health and for Marcia. Um, from Sarah, concern for our neighbors and friends who have flooded basements and cars. Having gone through that a couple years ago, I know how much fun it can be. Um, and a joy from Jim and Alvina, their grandson, River Sanders, will be two years old tomorrow. Yay! So, happy birthday to River. Now, if you would all please join me in a spirit of prayer. Eternal God, we come to you with faith that you hear us. We come to you in hope that you will listen to our hearts, to our souls, as we bring our prayers before you today. So many times we come with a shopping list of things we want. Today, Lord, we come to you in gratitude for all that we have. We are a blessed people. You have showered your blessings on us every day that we wake up and through our days as we go about them. Loving God, we pray for the health of Marcia's son 
and strength for her as she faces her child's illness. It's never easy for a parent to see their child in need or in pain. And so, Lord, we ask your healing touch on Marcia's son and your loving arms wrapped around her so that she will know she is never alone. Loving God, we are so grateful for young people who are growing in health, who are maturing, who learn new things every day. We thank you for the joys and the challenges that children bring. We thank you each day for their precious lives. <clears throat> Gracious God, we thank you for the rain, which we know is necessary. For those with an excess We pray patience. We pray for the waters to recede. We pray for help as they resolve these problems. Gracious God, hear now the prayers of your people, prayers that live in us so deep we cannot give them voice. And now, Lord, hear the words of the prayer taught by your Son to his disciples and passed down to us. Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. <coughs> Give us this day our daily bread. <coughs> forgive us our sins. As, as we, we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We come now to that special time in our service each week when we remember this Lord's table and why we gather here. We remember that it was at the very end of his life that Jesus shared a meal with his disciples and friends. During that meal, he took some bread from the table, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given and broken for you. As often as you eat this bread, do this in remembrance of me. In a similar fashion, he took the cup, he blessed it, and he gave it to them to drink, and said, This cup is the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me. These are the gifts of God, given for we, the people of God. Let us rejoice and celebrate.
Let us go forth to be light in the world. Let us go forth in peace and spread God's love to all we meet. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us stand and sing our closing song, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Have a great week, everyone. Stay safe. Try and stay dry. Now, when's the next onslaught? Huh? When's the next onslaught?